Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Lab to Lab Educational Series webinar. I'll be your host, Chris Charson, and today we'll be talking about all on X type restorations using Exocad. I'm sure many of you are aware, but there are many different types of uh, all on X type of restorations. We can do a full arch zirconia, some kind of cutback of porcelain. There's ones that you can add a bar to it. Or the one I want to be talking today is the thimble bar. A thimble bar is a very unique type of restoration because it gives you the support of a bar, but it also gives you the cleanliness of having the ability to put individual teeth and also the ability to make repairs in case the tooth was to break. Another cool feature about a thimble bar is you have the ability to um, block out screw access holes in case they come out through the face hole by doing a, a single individual crown on top of it. So let's begin. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. The first thing we're going to do when it comes to doing a all on X thimble bar type of restoration is the case setup. So to set this case up, we're going to do copings and reduced uh, plantics. The reason we're doing it this way is because this is going to give us the ability to not only do a thimble bar with individual crown preps on top of it, but you also have the ability to do a uh, uh, minor cutback or full cutback for uh, micro layering or full layering on your uh, teeth if you like. So we're gonna click here where it says tooth number two and we're gonna take a look at how to set up our Pontix. So to set up our Pontix, we're going to click reduce Pontix option over here. It doesn't matter what restoration type we go here, whatever restoration type we're gonna do. And these are all linked to different parameters that I can talk about later during the design. Then over here, I'd like to add a pre-op so I know the borders in the area that I'm designing my prep in. I want to make sure that I have the thimble uh, crown workflow uh, checked. And then the optional ask and wizard for the gingiva. Uh, the gingiva part is very important because it will allow us to not have to design each individual tooth to the tissue. We can leave the teeth floating and then the um, gingiva will take care of the uh, added or missing space between the um, intaglia or the ponic and the um, tissue. Next, we're going to take a look at the teeth preps. So any tooth that has an implant uh, behind it, we're going to select it as coping. Then we're going to go up here to where it says screw retained. Make sure the scan body option is turned on. And also, you want to make sure that the thimble option and the wizard is also highly checked. You can continue with the rest of the case. Just from click the, the next tooth, all the parameters associated with the last tooth you highlighted will add to the next one. So once the case is set up and ready to go, we're going to click the design. We're going to say start from scratch, like this is a brand new case. And we are ready to go. So it's typically the first step in a all on X type of case, or in this situation, a thimble bar setup, is you want to align the scan bodies to each individual prep. Since this is a demo case, this step is already uh, accomplished for us. But if it wasn't and you don't have the specific library needed, ExoCAD has a very uh, easy to use option where you can go to their centralized libraries and just find whichever scan body system you're using, click on that, download it, and then it will be in your options. And you just align each one. Once you align each one, it'll take you to this step. This is asking you here for any reason, if your pre-op is not aligned to your, um, to your model, you can do an alignment. This one, everything is fully lined up, so we're good to go. We're going to click next. If you want it, though, there's the an, uh, anatomical feature or the manual feature, and you can just align it that way. Once you're happy that your pre-op is aligned correctly, you have the ability to add a smile to the patient's, uh, a smile of the patient's face to the um, arch. Once that's lined up, you can click next. And now it's asking us to define the emergence profile. Uh, the computer will automatically align the um, 
it will detect it and align the emergence profile. But if you wanted to help it, you can click a few dots. And then it will do its alignment. This one here was off, so we can go to correct. And I can either grab the dots and correct it accordingly. Or if I wanted to, I can click where it says free and just kind of draw the areas where I want. And it will go. Um, the auto detect feature is very strong in the software, and I've never really had to manually draw this out. But if you ever had a problem where it wasn't detecting and you needed to draw out what you wanted the emergence profile to be, um, you can add it. But in this situation, I'm just going to leave it blank. And I'm going to click next. It's asking me for tooth number six now. Same thing. Tooth number 11 and tooth number 14. Okay, the next step is asking about tooth placement. This is one of the beauties about ExoCAD is that the ability to full arch cases is so simple compared to other softwares I've used in the past. So step one, what you wanna do is you wanna grab um, this little blue purplish grid thing and you kinda of wanna move the tooth fairly close to the outline of your pre-op. We're gonna do that to both sides. And there we go. So one of the features that um, ExoCAD has that's really nice is it's called the chain mode. And the way the chain mode works is any tooth you grab, you can move it and the arch will move, but, uh, but keeping the same original arch that you started with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place everything fairly close just by doing a few movements here. Okay. Once you're happy with the tooth placement, you have the ability to click on the green dot and that will freeze it in that area so that tooth won't be moved anymore. So example, if I like the area of this tooth, now when I move, only these teeth will move and that will stay locked. I'm gonna take a look from the occlusal view. Just gonna unlock this one and move these out just a little bit. That's good. Unlock these guys. Okay. Once I have my teeth in the general position, I can continue on to the next step. A couple of other extra tools I want to talk about. If there is an individual tooth you wanted to move, you can click here where it says single. And now you have the ability to move this, but it moves when it's still connected to the chain mode. So it tries to close the space or the gap if needed. Uh, another cool feature to use is called the tube mode. The way the tube mode works is, say your arch was larger than you thought it was going to be. You can just pull it and you can kind of adjust it mesodistally or if you keep one of these locked, you have the ability to make the arch bigger or smaller, depending on your restoration or the width or how much space you needed. Over here on advanced, you have the ability to kind of change the anatomy a bit if you wanted to. You can make things look flatter on the posterior or more pointed if you like. Kind of see how the teeth got a little bit more anatomy in them. And the same with the anteriors as well. Click here on the anteriors. And things tend to get a little sharper, a little smoother, a little pointier, depending on which option you pick. If you didn't like the chain mode option, there's also here that says simple. And simple allows you to move the teeth kind of in the same way. If you move everything simultaneously and leave it locked, you have the ability to grab everything and move it as a whole. But the biggest difference is moving things here uh, does not move as a chain together. So if I want to grab an individual tooth and move it, only that tooth moves and nothing else moves in its place.
yeah um if you use the chain mode and you have a tooth locked to just unlock something all you need to do is click the um the green dot and the green dot will lock or unlock that tooth at any given time the most important thing you want to do though is you want to lock the outer teeth because then that gives you a set point to move everything around so once these two back teeth are locked into place now the rest of the teeth can move accordingly good question Okay, we're gonna click next. Okay, the next question is asking you about how you want your um, emergence profile coming out of the um, uh, tissue to look like, right? Uh, you have the ability to lift it, move it, or you can choose one of these two options. One's more concave look and one's more of a convex look. I mean, this isn't going to matter too, too much because uh, you're going to be designing a thimble substructure on top of it, but it is nice to shape the tissue uh, the way you're looking at. Um, most of the time, what's going to end up happening is cut back the tissue area and then you're going to add your own. It's to practice shaping the tissue the way you want or at least have control over it. So that's what this here is asking us. Um, it's pretty much um, with these kind of the bottom is going to be pushing too much pressure on the teeth because then uh, um, if you do it individually, it's hard to see. But you do have the ability to adjust the height, the radius. Um, if you want an angulated screw channel, you can do that as well. Uh, we have a question here that says, how much I need to expand the design to the gingiva? It needs to be in contact with the gingiva, how much? Okay, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the gingiva phase and how important that is. Um, but it, it's actually a, a really cool feature. So right now, we're in the, the beauty of the free-forming mode is you have full control to adjust or to change or adapt your teeth uh, in any which way you like. Um, I can either add, subtract, I can flatten. Um, if you're doing kind of a copy scan or you have a pre-op and you're very happy with the pre-op, the biggest thing I want you to pay attention to is if anything is sticking through the intaglio, like we have over here. Because even though the gingiva will cover anything that's missing, so any of this space here will be covered, it will not take away anything that's protruding through the surface. So what I recommend you do is you go here to where it says adapt, and where it says basil, you keep it at zero and you click it. This will remove anything sticking through the model. Once you control the intaglio surface, you can go back to where it says freeform. And over here, you have the ability to add, subtract by simply holding uh, the control button. You can take away. Flattening is the same concept. Um, if you hold shift, you can control the wheel. You hold control. These are kind of some basic tools throughout Free Shape that um, you'll get familiar with. But you do have the ability to control your size and your strength by holding shift to control. Um, if you go here to anatomic, you have the ability to uh, grab and, and, and drag different cuss tips if you wanted to. So we can go here and kind of maybe shape that a little bit to fit the pre-op if we wanted to. And so forth. Um, if we had an opposing, if I had added an opposing onto here, I could then cut to my opposing, shape things out, and kind of do some um, uh, individual movements that you know are going to give your bridge that extra wow factor. Um, feel free to uh, make any additional uh, attachments if you needed to, or you know anything to get your bridge to where you wanted to. You could see that from a default standing 
I did very little to this design to get it to this anatomy and this look. I mean, that's really the beauty of Exocat, in my opinion, that these default, the ability to maneuver everything is uh, very simplistic. So once you're happy with your full arch, you can click next. We did all the smooth and flattening to everything. We're good to go there. And now it's asking you for the pre-op. Now, if I wanted to copy my pre-op design, I can say adapt teeth model and it will copy my exact pre-op the way I want it to. But I kind of like my design a little bit more than my pre-op. I'm gonna leave it alone and not adapt to it. So I'm like, okay. Now what the computer is asking us is it wants you to find the uh, best insertion direction to block out this model so we can add tissue to it. So you wanna look at it from the best possible occlusal view. And then you wanna hit set from occlusal view and then you can click next. And now the computer is gonna take its time to do its block out so that we can add tissue to this case. Does three shape have a different chain mode for maneuvering teeth? If yes, how do you, how does it differ from Exocad? Um, three shape does not have a chain mode. Uh, I used to do a lot of three shape training as well, and they go through it with a slightly different approach. Uh, you have the ability to move the teeth all together, kind of like I showed you in the uh, uh, a simple feature of Exocad, but there isn't an actual chain mode. There's a, um, there's a tool that's similar to it, which allows you to kind of move teeth in an arch, but I don't think it's as comprehensive as chain mode. It is similar though. I forgot the exact name of it, but it allows you to move an arch, right? Versus this chain mode allows you to control any section of the teeth you want by clicking that red and green dot, which I know for sure is different. But um, yeah, good, good question. Uh, it's definitely something I, I would recommend exploring and looking at the difference between the two but definitely when it comes to a, a, a chain mode uh I, I like the exocat feature a lot better also this software runs really really fast it just so happens my computer is a little older so it takes a little long to process but if you had a, one of those brand new high power computers it'd be going through loading extremely quickly so here we're gonna say yes to design us a one single gingiva for all the teeth. Okay, so now what the software is asking us is to draw the outline of the base we wanna use. So you just simply do some clicks. Um, this feature is all access holes are not over the teeth. Um, this is a demo case, so these, these screw access holes are perfect, but if you did run into a situation where things were more palatable or more facial, you wanna make sure to uh, design your gingiva so that it goes um, around uh, where the screw access hole is gonna come out from. Okay, once we've done a full 360 around our bridge, we're gonna double click on the last thought. And now the computer is gonna be generating our tissue. Another beautiful thing I like about ExoCAD is the tissue feature is amazing. Like I said, I've used some other features in the past and I haven't been too impressed with the uh, um, amount of adjustments I need to do after the tissue has been uh, placed. But with ExoCAD, it is amazing. Um, if you notice that you didn't like the way the tissue formed in some areas, you can always grab these dots and make a movement to it. I think overall that came out really nice. We wanna make sure we check the intaglio and that nothing's bleeding through. We took care of that earlier. So that looks good. Okay, this looks really nice. Uh, you do have some surface properties here you can check. You can control the base thickness if you wanted this to be a certain thickness. Uh, the cervical thickness, you can control that as well. And the smoothing as well, if you didn't want things to be um, 
the festooning to be as strong, you can definitely play with the smoothing to adjust that. Once you're happy with the uh, gingiva, you can go next. This feature is also very powerful, guys, when you do your um, all on X conversions, your next days, because uh, the initial design you did versus the tissue design you do afterwards, you can adjust it by using the um, tissue feature to fill in that extra space. So you can design your cases ahead of time and then have the ability to um, merge it to your new tissue after surgery and then use the tissue feature to fill in the extra space. It's a great way to expedite the process, especially if you're trying to do everything same day. Okay, so now we're in the free forming gingiva step. So this gives you the ability here if you wanted to, you can go and make, um, here, let's move this out of the way so we can see it a little better. So here gives you the ability if you wanted to add or subtract and um, one second. Okay. So if I wanted to maybe play with my festooning a little bit, add or subtract, I don't know why the pre-op is not. There it is. Sorry. Whoops. It's hiding on me. Okay. So if you wanted to play with your festooning and maybe change a few things, you can go here to free, go to kind of smooth, and here you can kind of smooth and add and play a little bit with the tissue make it stronger or if you wanted to take some away to make space for tissue later you have the ability to play with all of those once you're happy with your tissue you can click where it says next you also can see where your square access holes are coming from which is really nice and this is what i meant earlier when i said uh if you ever had a restoration with a square access hole is very facial uh, you can cement a crown directly on top of the thimble bridge, and this way you don't have to worry about that square access hole until you have to remove it or in case you have to remove it. But at least it gives you an extra um, option to uh, be more versatile, where if you wanted to cover the hole now and remove the tooth later, or you could still just put composite and block it out and make it a true screw retain. Okay, uh, cutback library we want to use. So we got the thimble set up. It's good to go. Uh, use all these teeth to kind of where the shadow is. And you can see how effortlessly this is cut back, ready to go for teeth. I think it came out really, really nice. If you did want to do any free forming or changing, you can come in here and smooth things out, add to it. Just remember, though, that these thimbles are surveyed meaning that it's made for a crown prep to go on top of it. So anything you do in the positive will create an undercut. Anything you do in the negative will be okay. But they are surveyed right now. So I would probably recommend not to play with them too much unless you wanted to tilt an angle or control something, right? So for instance, if I wanted to maybe go into uh, anatomic here and I wanted to grab you know, maybe the entire tooth and I want to shift it over, you probably could do that, but like I said, just be careful that you know you don't um, ruin the surveying of each tooth. You know, like here, if you wanted to just slightly tilt it over, you have that ability to do that if you wanted to. But remember, these are made to cut out of your teeth, so they're uh, dead center of each tooth that you had, so I don't recommend playing with the positions of these too much. Once you're happy with your thimble setup, uh, again, it's giving you the options to do any of the cut to. Uh, we already kind of did all our cut to, but actually here you can see it's sticking out a bit. So let's go back here to where it says basil, and we're going to hit that. And now remove anything sticking through the intaglio surface. Always pay attention to your intaglio surface because you don't want it to be 
uh, blanching on the tissue too much. Okay, looks good. Case looks ready to continue. We're going to click next. Okay, it's asking us to design the thimble substructure now. We're going to say yes. And now it's going to do the margin on each one of the cases. Uh, you have the ability to uh, change these margins and do whatever you want by clicking correct or control. Uh, we're going to look at each one, but for the most part, the system does a really good job that when it cuts back, it remembers where the margins were set at. There's number three. Looks good. Number four. As you can see in the previous step, if I wanted to be extra critical, I probably could have made some of these um, uh, thimbles more submerged into the tissue, which you do have the ability to go back and play with. Well, this is calculating. Let's take a look at another question. Uh, can this system work on veneers too or just crowns? Um, I mean, doing a veneer situation would be kind of tricky just because uh, you usually do a thimble. Actually, yeah, I could see you could do it for a veneer. I mean, uh, why not? We can design these to be more of a full crown and then just add a a veneer prep to each one. Um, the only thing that would take away is one of the main beauties of the patient is the uh, repair, be able to replace it without losing your structure. Versus if your whole stuff kind of a veneer prep case, um, you'd be limited in the type of repair work you can do. Asking for is your green it means that it's going to be a very it's going to add a little space to fit these teeth on. Um, for a situation like this, I tend to like my um, crowns to be just a little tighter on here so they don't fall off as easy. So you can control your cement gap uh, a little tighter or a little looser depending on your preferences. But just remember that these are all going to be individually cemented onto this prep. So once you're happy with the way um, you have your uh, default parameters, you can go here to where it says border. Uh, this one's pretty important. Um, for some reason, the default is set at zero, but this wouldn't work. If you were going to produce these crowns at zero um, thickness, uh, your crowns would uh, not have enough thickness to manufacture or produce. So what horizontal means, it's the inner line to the outer line. It's also called your margin re, uh, reinforcement thickness. Uh, I technically recommend people to go to around a millimeter, like so. Two millimeters is definitely on the thick side. You're definitely going to feel a lip that you can catch on your surveyor. Um, it doesn't mean that if you wanted to do it at a thicker thickness, you couldn't just reduce it by hand. Anything below one, you're going to risk chipping. So if you have a really good mill with really good burrs and you think you can get away with it, you can definitely do 0.1 or 0 0.08. But just keep in mind that this has to do with that thickness at the bottom of your crown. Uh, the rest of these, angled, angle, vertical, and below margin, these have to do with the emergence profile of how the crown's going to come out. Uh, even though these are default uh, parameters, you do have the ability to smooth and take care of those things in the in the design phase. When it comes to advanced, if you did happen to adjust your preps and they're no longer surveyed and you want it to be a very tight fit, you can say do not block out undercuts. And what that will do is that's kind of typical to if you were to take like a glove 
one of those latex gloves and put it over a crown prep, it would suck everything into it. So a crown would not fit as easily as if you were to remove the undercuts. So just keep in mind that um, do not uncheck this box unless you have to, because if this box is checked, it usually means that you're going to be doing a lot of uh, fitting and finishing. Uh, another uh, tool that I would pay attention to if you're doing milling is anticipate milling 1.2 diameter. What this does is it kind of looks at the intaglio. You can't see it here, but it'll look at the intaglio surface of the crown or kind of this outer top area right here, and it'll make it to a thickness of at least a millimeter or 1.2. This way, when your mill goes to do its finishing, it can use a one millimeter burr, which is thicker and stronger to do the bulk of the trimming versus if this number was less than that, it might grab be forced to grab a 0.6 millimeter burr to do the bulk of your trimming. And there's a good chance you might get breakage, tool breakage from that. Once you're happy with your default parameters, you can click next. And now it's gonna generate the crowns that we had designed previous question. So let's take a look at that. Can the, uh, would you please explain what you meant by uh, conversion and chair side? Sure. So what I meant by that is um, there's many different systems that uh, people do when they do chair side conversions or same day or next day. And uh, one of the typical um, types of conversions that I like to do is not a conventional conversion where you put holes through the uh, restoration, and then you reline the temporary cylinders. Those tend to get messy. They weaken the overall structure. Patients tend to, you know, break the, the um, prosthesis a lot easier. And, and also, I don't think it's too hygienically cleansy, uh, cleansable because you're using a denture that you converted to someone's tissue. So unless you do like a reline with the Lyx or some kind of material to really capture that tissue, and then there's stitches and things that might get in the way and grab it just gets a little messy so what i recommend that um most senses do on conversion day is that they do the surgery so they'll start at eight and typically finish it around noon or one o'clock and then they take a scan body scan well they'll put scan bodies in the patient's mouth and uh do a full scan body uh, scan or even i i've done impressions in the past if you're having issues taking a scan body scan and the impression, um, even though it sounds a little uh, extreme to take an impression in someone's mouth, especially right after surgery, I have done it even with alginate before, just so it's still good enough to capture the scan bodies without uh, ripping anything from it. And I'll pour a model and then scan the scan body scan as well. So then what you do is, now that you have a scan body scan, you can align it to this design that you did, right? You got to think about is this design was done before surgery was even done. So you have something ready to go. Then when you have your scan body scan, you align the two scans together. And now you have the ability to take this design and adapt it to your new tissue with your new scan body. Um, I can show you that feature in a later video, or if anybody wants to learn more about it, feel free to reach out to me. I'll kind of go through the step to step of how to preemptively do a design, then adapt it to your uh scan body scan and then from there the beauty of that is now that the tissue is different when you do this tissue feature it will fill in that space so now you have your perfect teeth that you set up the new tissue and now you have the scan body alignments of where you want it to do so this way you can either tell the patient to wait a couple hours for us to produce this which i don't really recommend because whenever a patient's in the chair there's always some kind of issue that pops up but if you get really efficient at it it's definitely something you could do same day. Uh, I recommend you have the patient come back the following morning. You do your checks, make sure you know the stitches are holding up. You don't see any, you know, maybe infections or anything that's going on. And then you can uh, take a finished PMMA or printed material that you did that night. And it's a simple 15 minute, 20 minute screw in. Um, and you should be good to go. And if everything is done correctly, the bite should be correct. The screw access hole should be perfect. Uh, I do recommend a capless technique. So you do a direct to multi-unit abutment type of restoration. 
Uh, this way, you don't have to worry about making a jig and having a model to screw your caps onto. But I mean, those are definitely things we can talk about at a different time or if anybody wants to do a little private session and kind of go over that in more detail, I'll be more than happy to talk about it. But uh, the trick is you need a design that's pre-done, okay? You're typically not gonna do a thimble kind of restoration for a conversion related case, but the concept of doing the design ahead of time will be the same. And you could do it in theory if you wanted to. So now that you have your uh, crowns, uh, you have the ability to come in here and kind of do the same thing we've been doing in the past and add, subtract, move, smooth things out, uh, pretty much do any kind of uh, final touches you want to do to your uh, case here. Um, if we were to remove this, you can kind of see how Oh, it's going to show us in the next step. Let me see here. Oh, it'll do it in the next step. So yeah, so here you just want to make sure your teeth are exactly how you want them to be. Uh, you have this adapt tool here, which if we had added an antagonist to the case, um, you can cut to the antagonist and make sure all your teeth, your excursions, everything's done the exact way you want it to be. Again, if I did have a um, opposing to this, it would open up and I would have the ability to use the articulator to check for my excursions, do all my movements, uh, pretty much get my teeth the exact position I want. Uh, a thing that I told you that was very unique about doing this thimble bar setup is you can restore the patient's ability to floss in between each tooth that they wanted to. And that's something that uh, is very important, but it's also like a, a mentally kind of um, satisfying feeling to a patient that they feel like, oh, I have individual teeth again that can floss through each one. So that's another feature that uh, you could restore back by doing this type of thimble kind of setup. Once you're happy with this design right here, we can click next. And now it's doing the minimal thickness. So it's taking your crown and fitting it onto each one of those preps. Once you're happy with the overall look and thickness and the way everything sits inside your um, your tissue or the bar, you can click next. And I'm really impressed by this next feature that I'm gonna show you guys. This gives you the ability to do different types of cutbacks to your case, right? Some people don't wanna do cutbacks. They wanna use, you know, straight zirconia, individual teeth, and um, just cement a crown for each prep, which which definitely works. I mean, one of the beauties about doing these all on X type of restorations is that because each one of the teeth look the same and they come from the same zirconia, um, it, it blends in and uh, looks really nice, in my opinion, for shading and overall. Um, for shading and overall matching, right? But there's always those technicians that want to go above and beyond and kind of do some micro layering or do a cut back and do a full porcelain kind of setup. And ExoCAD gives you that freedom to um, fully customize whatever kind of workflow you want to do. So if you wanted to set these posterior teeth up to do a full contour, you could have done that. And then we could have just set up the anteriors to do some kind of cut back. Uh, you have the full freedom to do that. Okay. So now that um, the gingiva is good to go, things look good there, we're gonna click next. And then the next step is going to be uh, the crowns and the cutbacks, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this more to full power so you can see it a little better. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is you have the ability to choose the facial ridges that I was talking about, which is almost a full cutback. And you can kind of see it here. Let me bring this to full power so you can see it a little better.
So this would be more of a kind of full cutback with mammalons. So it kind of gives you the ability to layer porcelain kind of fully on the facial while leaving the uh, occlusal surface and the lingual and full, um, full zirconia. Or you have what I like to use a little bit more is the incisal ridges. And this kind of just gives you a little bit to deal with here. So if you just wanted to do a little bit of micro layering on the incisal edge, just to kind of fill in the shape a little bit and kind of give it your own little translucency or incisal differences, you can add it right in there. Uh, let's take a look at another question right here. Uh, what are your recommendations in switching from Densify Serona to Exocad? Ease of software, better restorations from one or the other. Um, Densify Serona software has gotten extremely better from where it started. Uh, I've used it not too long ago, and I have been impressed with the differences. But when it comes to 3Shape and, and Exocad, I, I really feel like those two types of software are on a different level and they give you a lot more freedom and different kind of restorations. I highly recommend that you do an ExoCAD demo with me that I could set up with you and we can go through kind of more of these modules and kind of customize the system to what you might be looking for. And then you can kind of make the decision if you feel that ExoCAD is more powerful for what your different types of restoration than the Serona system is. I, I don't want to talk badly about any other software because I have used the Serona recently and it, it got way better than how I remembered it. So um, it's more of a preference based thing. Uh, and then we got here. Uh, so for the pre design, you need to import the proposed implant location surgical. Yeah, so this is back to that implant um, related conversion question. Uh, once you finish your design, you would save that and you would take your scan body scan and align the two together. Once you align the two together, now you have your, um, and I'll show you how to set up the case, but you would have your design already ready to go. And now you have your implant placements uh, aligned to it. Now, typically um, this works a lot easier for an upper because an upper has the hard palette to align the scan body scan to the tissue scan, but, um, it, it does work and we can talk about different techniques and tricks to uh, making that work as well. Okay, so now that we got our uh, cutback um, set up the way we like, I, and, and I'm telling you guys, I mean, if you realize I did very little changes, very little moves, uh, the, the software is very powerful to kind of do this cutback for you and hit it in the exact same spot. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm very impressed if you're a type of technician that likes to do your own um, uh, porcelain layering and micro layering to kind of get that extra pop. Uh, this is a perfect setup for you. You can click next. So now it's gonna cut the crowns to the uh, thimble preps. And another thing too, don't judge the speed of the software based on what you guys are seeing right now, because I promise you on a fast computer, this would be like lightning. It goes extremely quick. I wanted to do a, a simple bar setup because it's one of the more advanced features and and I wanted to show how I saw the steps of how to do a um, less complicated case at the same time as doing a more complicated thimble kind of setup. You can see how it's um, adapting each two to the uh, prep of the thimble right now. We'll give this a couple more minutes. I'm located in Sacramento, guys, and it's actually raining, and it never rains out here, so it's kind of a treat to, you know, 
see rain for once. <laughs> We'll give it another couple minutes, or maybe a minute max. Now let's see, we got another question as well. Um, how's your experience been so far with the Rajika update? Is there a learning curve or any particular features that stand out? Uh, very good question. Um, I'm personally the type of person where I don't like to buy the first year of a new car, right? Because there's always going to be the slightest bit of bugs or things to work around, uh, or just you getting used to switching from one piece of the software to the other. But the Rajika update has been really nice. I mean, um, there's a few features that are not so much different, but they're just placed in different areas. Like for instance, here, how you have the add, remove, and adapt. Uh, in the 3.0, this adapt feature is in its own special tab, right? Um, you do get a couple other features that are really nice. Like I know in the denture software, you have the ability to open and close the bytes and, and do a few things that the 3.0 didn't have. If you can stay up to date, I highly recommend that you update and get used to the new softwares because all these new tools that are going to be coming out in the future are going to be based on the newest software. If you're stuck on the 3.0 and it's more of a financial decision to update, then you know that's up to you because each one of these softwares have the ability to, to pretty much do almost everything you need from crowns, bridges, splints. I mean, the 3.0 is and then being able to take care of all those things. I recommend it. You know, get used to the um, stay with all the So that is always going to be based off the newest, whichever um, uh, setup or tool that you're trying to do based off, you know, what comes out the newest. So now we have each tooth um, divided. So let's kind of take a look at it here. We're going to go to teeth. And let's just take one off just for looks. Uh, maybe it's still in the next step. Did I go too far? Let me see here. It must be still connecting. So right now what it's doing is connecting the tissue to the preps to the teeth. Well, the teeth are separate, but yeah. So we're gonna give the software a minute to do its final uh, connections and um, it's going to connect your your thimble preps to the tissue and then each one of these teeth are going to be individual crowns for you to produce uh, at your own convenience. Um, one thing I like to mention too is there's many different ways to produce a thimble bar. Um, you can design it this way where the tissue is almost uh, preformed and um, the festooning is done, right? But a lot of people like to add composite to this. So um, if that's something that you would like to do, then you would want to reduce this uh, definitely uh, quite a bit more so that you have room for that um, composite in there. If you're doing a different type of system where you're going to mill the, um, the uh, composite area or the framework in one of those newer kind of uh, materials that are out there that the color is what you like, then I would highly recommend that because one thing that I tend to notice with composite is it is the prettiest thing in the world when you first put it on. I mean, this thing, if you do it with composite and these teeth is gonna look like a million dollars. What happens is composite tends to pit and kind of get grimy over time. So um, keep that in mind that if you're gonna do a composite type of restoration for the gingiva, that you um, 
mention to the customer about hygiene and how to constantly clean these things up because I typically tend to notice that the people who need these hybrid kind of restorations don't have the best oral hygiene to begin with. So if they have lost all their teeth, most likely they're not going to clean this as, as nice as it needs to be. So if you have those newer materials where you can print the um, or mill the tissue portion of it as one piece, I would highly recommend that versus doing this in some kind of metal or zirconia and then using composite to wrap around it. So the porcelain would be better than composite. Uh, yeah, I mean, porcelain would be much better than composite if you wanted to use like a, uh, a pink porcelain to wrap around this whole thing. But just keep in mind, guys, is that um, porcelain tends to shrink and move and, you know, uh there's cooling factors involved and the worst thing in the world is putting this in an oven and then putting putting the the pink porcelain on there and then it comes out and you have a fracture or a crack or something happens um it's very technique sensitive when you use uh pink porcelain to wrap around the whole thing but it is beautiful it works but you're going to use up a lot of porcelain as well um but, but great idea if that's something you're comfortable with you have your cooling and you temperature is correct um I, I would recommend it porcelain is a good thing but then also something to keep in mind of porcelain too is it tends to be a little bit on the heavier side so just keep that in mind as well because there's a conia frame or the metal frames are already kind of heavy then you're going to put some porcelain on there then you're going to put some teeth on there too i mean this is gonna end up weighing quite a bit at the end of it so um the composite's a nice way to keep the restoration a little bit on the lighter side in my opinion Is there a, is, if there's a crack on the crown, do you have to redo the whole ExoCAT case or can you use the previous scans uh, you took? Yeah, no, you could definitely, um, I mean, it depends, right? If just a tooth cracked, right? You can uh, remove that tooth and you should have your old tooth file saved and you can re, uh, you know, mill that or redesign it. If it's more of a, you know, uh, the prep broke or something, then yeah, you could bring back the framework and do any kind of redesigns or, it's very, very versatile and ExoCAD is super simple in opening up the case and being able to adjust at any given time. If I went into expert mode right now, this case is finished by the way. If I had gone into expert mode right now and uh, I selected just one tooth, I can just make adjustments to that one tooth if needed. So um, very versatile software, uh, it gives you great flexibility to kind of do almost anything you want to do. I mean, I mean, we just did a full thimble case with facial cutback. Each one of these preps are perfectly surveyed. Like, um, like I said, I, I've used a lot of softwares in the past and definitely for a thimble related case, one of the best, uh, softwares that I've seen for this kind of stuff. Right. And, and then you have that ability too. do you want to make this a crown that covers the screw access hole? And then if you ever have to remove it in the future, you can just pop the crown off or you could do it as a true screw retain and put the hole all the way through the crown and then just put composite to block the hole out. So a very, very versatile system, um, really cool setup. Let me see now if I could take the thimble off to show you. Oh, here we go. So you can see now if I was to take the thimbles off, you can see how each crown is perfectly surveyed over the preps. Um, I mean, you're going to have amazing uh, um, fits when you come to this. And then, too, the, the, even if for some reason or another your fits weren't superior for whatever reason, say you had a milling issue or something, the porcelain or the composite could wrap around these teeth, too. So you're not going to get that um, trapping of bacteria or anything that's going to get over there because you have the ability to use your tissue to kind of wrap around and make a nice seal around each one of these teeth as well. And that's kind of the um, all on X thimble bridge kind of setup. Uh, let's take a look to see how many more questions we have. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, we got one more here. Uh, can you design a custom abutment and crown with a hole in it simultaneously? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, in that previous step, there was an ability where we were working on these right here. You can go into expert mode if you like. Click on whichever tooth you want to put a hole in. Let's say it's this one. 
uh, you can go to where it says uh, freeform, freeforming. Over here, you can go to attachment. You can go to subtract. And then over here, you have the ability to choose, uh, let's see here. Okay. And over here, like say I want to place the tooth. And then you can just um, kind of place it where you'd like the screw access hole to be. And then when you're ready, here, let's just take the old screw access hole so we can see this a little bit better. Okay. And then when you're ready, you can just sit here. You could scale it definitely. If you want to scale it bigger or smaller, you can hold shift to make it bigger. Uh, you saw how I did the rotate. You can rotate it and tilt it, and then you just hit apply. And there you go. I didn't do it deep enough. If I had done it deep enough, that was my fault. Uh, it's just a little bigger so we can see it. Okay. Now let's try that apply. Again, I could have done a much better job, made the hole bigger, but you can see how you can make your own custom holes through any of these teeth if you wanted to. Or in the software, you have the ability to say screw through all uh, holes as well. Uh, once you're finished with the case, another cool feature I like to do here is um, for my record purposes is I like to do, do something like this, where uh, let's go back to, to our finished case. So even though you have the 3D image of the case ready to go, I like to do kind of a 2D uh, PDF export. So I kind of have records of the case and it kind of shows me the thimble to the crown side. So I want to show that to you guys. Um, unfortunately, we got to wait for this to load again really quick. So we'll give it a minute. Also, we're going to bring up our polls pretty soon. And uh, let me know if you guys want to learn more about ExoCAD, more about Evident Designs, or what kind of services we apply. Uh, one thing I want to mention too about um, about that uh, all on X conversion case, we have a lot of our customers who have us do the design for them ahead of time. So then when they get ready to do that conversion, they can just take that perfect design we did and then adapt it to the new setup. If you don't have that ability or you're not too um, confident in your initial design. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any questions about a dongle or um, ExoCab related. If you have any uh, evident design service questions, we can have one of our um, account managers reach out to you. If you're interested in the Medit, the Medit T710 scanner is a really nice scanner. Um, I've used a lot of scanners out there. I'm definitely impressed by that one. And if you're interested in any CE credits, we can definitely get that for you as well. We'll just give this another quick minute to load up. Let's see if I have any questions. Cool. The last feature I wanted to show you guys was the PDF export um, feature. But we'll just give this another few seconds to load up.
So what I typically like to do is I like to do like half the arch with the T, the other half of the arch with the thimble preps, and then I would do a PDF export. Um, as soon as this case finishes loading. Um, is the Rijika update uh, spec heavy? Do you need to upgrade existing hardware? Um, it's not really. OK, so that's a tough question because my laptop is not the greatest. And I can run any kind of software and do anything I want. But if you want that extra level of speed and processing power, like right now, you can see my system is taking an extra few minutes to process this. If you had a high-end computer with a good graphics card, I mean, this would processed in, in literally a blink of an eye almost. It's not the software thinking. This is the computer uh, processing speed trying to process all this information. So if you do have the resources to get a nice spec computer, and if you'd like to know what those specs are, let me know, and I can send you a copy of it, out or not. Um, you can definitely get away with us. This is the last kind of step here. here it is. What I do for my records. So I will do some. Sorry, I'm finding a little bit of a lag right here. What I do is I like to do something where I take half my teeth off and leave the other half of the teeth on. I'll says, um, and I like to do a PDF export. And what this does here is it will do something like this, where it will take an image of the design you did in every angle, attach it to the patient's original name, and um, give you a nice PDF export that I think is actually really cool. That's going to load up in one second. Yeah, my, my computer is not happy with the... Uh, streaming going at the same time as the designing but uh i really want to show you guys what this did so let's give it another second or two Let me make sure all all our things are up to date good good okay again we'll just give it another quick second this pdf should be opening any second now and in the meantime while we're waiting for that we can close out this case and say i'm done let's say save anyway And then now here, when you go to open an explorer, you will have all your uh, files in here. So at any given time, you can grab any one of your STLs that you want. Uh, let me just open this one. This should be our sub framework. And there's a thermal restoration, all one piece, screw access tools ready to go. And all those other files with individual crowns. Um, I don't know why that other file took a while to load. Um, I'll be more than happy to share it at another time. But it just gives you uh, an each individual screenshot of your case with this. Uh, I want to thank everybody for your time. Uh, I really appreciated uh, you joining the webinar. And if you have a uh, email me or call and ask. For me and I'm